Hey guys, so uh, today I thought what we'd do is uh, go through um, the stack of books I've set aside to, to send out for uh, grading and, and sealing. Um, I've sent a few books out. Right now I think I have about six pending. Um, I, I went with CBCS, which is like CGC Junior. <laughs> um, and they said that uh, even with everything going on, they, they've, you know, they're still open. And uh, they said their times were down to about two months, which is actually really good for them. Um, I sent uh, two books out before. And um, I think at the time they were kind of new and they were getting flooded. So um, those first two took a good four to six months to get back, which... Um, you know, kind of sucks to be waiting that long, but um, I find their price is a little bit better than CTC. Uh, plus, they have a, a signature authentication um, program where, you know, even if they didn't see the signature being done, um, you know, you can send the book in and they, they have signature guys because they're uh, attached to Beckett, which is a, um, you know, they're basically a signature authorization and um, authentication company so um, I, I might send some stuff out to CGC uh, eventually with CGC the, the issue I have is you have to um, basically you have to buy a membership and then on top of that you can pay to have books sent in so um, they do have one level where you basically pay for the membership and you get credit for what you paid uh, I might do that and send some books over there because, you know, CGC realistically is the kind of the <laughs> be-all, end-all for grading as far as collectors are concerned a lot of the time. So, um, the CBCS books don't, you know, they, they won't get as much as a CGC graded book would uh, in the long run. But, um, so... <laughs> First one I have in the pile here is just Umbrella Academy number one. Um, this is the first print, first issue from Gerard Way. Uh, obviously, they turned this into a Netflix series, and uh, you know they've had a couple minis since then. And uh, well, he just had a about a six issue mini series come out. Um, I want to say late last year, so I figured I'd send that one in. Uh, this is Giant Size Astonishing X-Men, um, when Joss Whedon was on it with John Cassidy, uh, and this is a variant, uh, black and white cover, um, I saw this going on eBay for like 50, 60 bucks, not graded, so, uh, I figured since I've, I honestly have never cracked the cover on this thing, um, I figured I'd go ahead and send it out and, and, you know, get a grade on it, um, the fact that I've never even opened it and that I read the my other um, copy is, you know, hopefully that'll make it more or less pristine. Uh, this is The Flash number 102 uh, by Mark Wade. Um, this one I'm going to send for the signature because up in the corner there over Flash's foot, uh, it was signed by Mark Wade at uh, WonderCon one year. Uh, that I went, uh, when I went to WonderCon, it was in the Bay Area, San Francisco, and at the time it was like my first or second con, and I, I would just take one issue for the guys to sign. Um, you know, I'd be standing behind a guy who had 30 issues for their signature, so, um, you know, they would sign my stuff. I might ask them a question because, you know, they'd be willing to... Um, talk a little bit more since I wasn't just asking them to sign my entire collection. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is Hellboy Wake the Devil number two of five. Uh, signed by Mike Mignola, also at WonderCon. Um, I want to say, I don't remember if I knew if that, you know, before I went, um, I did pack some things in my bag as far as like things to get signed, but um, most of the time, you know, I, I didn't check and see as far as the whole list of who would be there. So, um, 
for some of these guys, I would have to go and, and find an issue for them to sign. So I think that's probably the case there. <clears throat> uh, this is Firestorm number 14 from when they did the um, after Identity Crisis. Ronnie Raymond on Identity Crisis kind of he explodes at one point. So this was the uh, reboot. Um, this one signed by Terry Moore. Oh, and he dated it, which is <laughs> extremely helpful for when I send it out. Um, he was writing Firestorm at this time. I think they got up to about 20 or so issues, and then, um, you know, this was around the time that DC was doing, uh, you know, reboots every five seconds, so. Uh, Green Arrow 29 by, uh, this was signed by Judd Winnick. I really like Judd Winnick's work for a while there. He was, uh, you know, like D one of DC's number one guys. He was doing Green Arrow, and he did Batman. He did that Red Hood story. Um, and then I think he basically just, you know, left left DC and, and went back to doing his uh, indie stuff with Barry Ween. Um, you know, I, I don't see much in the way of mainstream work from him anymore. Uh, but for a while there, he was basically DC's top guy, if you ask me. So have that. That year, I also had him sign a, uh, it was the cover to the Bat, or the Superman Shazam crossover. Uh, the artist had uh, some really nice prints um, of the covers. So I had uh, Winnick and, and the artist sign one. I have that up. Um, Batman, number 615, part of the Hush storyline. Uh, this one signed by Jeff Loeb. Um, he was super nice. He was there. Uh, a lot of people had, uh, as I said, like 50 issues <laughs> for him to sign. Um, but, you know, I just, this is the, one of the best covers for that run. So it's like, well, you know, I, I'm not here to get 50 signatures and, and have to carry my collection with me. So, um, you know, I'm signing the best one. Uh, Adventures of Superman 627. This one signed by Greg Rucka. Um, this Superman at this time for me wasn't, wasn't great. Greg Rucka had one of the better, um, runs. Um, of course he's a little bit better known for Wonder Woman at this point, but, um, I don't think he had, if he had done his Wonder Woman run at this point, I don't, I don't remember. I want to say no. Um, for a while there, he was doing uh, one of the Batman books, I think was... Uh, maybe it was Detective, or... Um, they might have had a Gotham City police procedural, I believe, uh, that he was doing before he really started getting famous there. Uh, this one is signed by Jeff Johns, JSA. I uh, loved his work on this <clears throat> this book. Um, when I had him sign this, I think it was 2006, so uh, he was not at the head of the DC. Um, you know, right now he's chief creative officer, and he's basically one of the top guys with Jim Lee. Um, back here, um, when I went up to get his signature, literally no one was in the line for his signature. Um, there was actually one kind of weird dude uh, standing and talking to him, but he was he was obviously a little out there. And um, you know, so I, I went up to Jeff and and he signed this. He was really nice, and um, I think I might have asked a question, but the weird dude kind of stayed, you know, to the side like waiting. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I tried to, um, you know, interact long enough with Jeff to maybe get the, the weird guy to wander off, but he did not, so, um, if Jeff Johns ever happens to see this, I am really sorry I couldn't save you from that, uh, questionable, um, gentleman <laughs> that day. Uh, I think even after I walked off, you know, that guy who stood there and was asking him weird questions for probably another 20 minutes, so, um, but yeah, I mean, that was before Jeff John's star kind of ignited, and he started doing all these big event books. 
Uh, this Daredevil number 80 is signed by Gene Colan, um, who passed away a few years ago. This was one of his, probably his last uh, signings. He was pretty, he was getting up there in age when I went to see him. Um, and his wife was with him. I, I want to say at the time he was, his vision would had been bad for a while, but he was basically, you know, he, he could not see. She was leading him around. Um, and uh, so I went and, and picked this up for him to sign. Um, and it's funny because he signs, you know, he signed up in the corner here so that he wouldn't mess with the artwork. Uh, you know, everybody else is signing over the artwork, and, and Gene's, you know, he was so careful to put his signature up in the corner so that it wouldn't be affecting the cover. Um, really nice guy. Uh, this is Batman and the Mad Monk, number one, uh, signed by Matt Wagner. Um, Matt Wagner's better known for, like, Grendel, stuff like that, but he did a couple... Batman miniseries in the, uh, yeah, this year, 2006 or so, um, and his artwork is just so great that, you know, basically anybody there I could get a signature for, I did so. Uh, Civil War number five variant, uh, this one is signed by Michael Turner, um, this was maybe a year before he passed away, um, I remember when I saw him, he was he was on crutches. He had just had um, some surgery done uh, for, I believe it was his leg. Um, I want to say it was something cancer related with like bone cancer. Um, but he was, you know, he was on crutches. He was at his table. I had him sign this and, and one other copy for a friend. Um, was a collection I had just bought. I wanted to like, you know, repay him kind of. Um, super nice guy. Uh, he signed mine and, and the other, you know, he signed my couple of shoes right before doing a sketch for a guy. So, um, back to just stuff I want to send off at some point. Uh, this is just the Hawkman number one variant from the new, um, the new Rebirth title that started up. I'm a big Hawkman fan, and uh, the variants are, are super cool. They're just classic, like, you know, here's Hawkman and his mace. So, um, probably send those off to CBCS, because they're newer and, you know, not too big of a deal. Um, Superman 45 by uh, Tomasi and Gleason. I just really liked this cover. This is a... Uh, Giant Boy um, cover, variant cover. Um, Tomasi's run on, on Superman was pretty good. Um, and I just really liked that cover. Thought it would be worth getting graded. Uh, this is Justice League number three. Variant cover by uh, Snyder. Um, not a big fan of this run. But um, I did pick up a variant to issue one which I'm having graded and then I probably send that off too this one is Swamp Thing 47 which um, by Alan Moore it's not known as a big deal book but it's the first um, the first parliament of trees so um, you know if you know Swamp Thing he's kind of part of the, the green and this is the first appearance of the Basically, the masters of the green, the Parliament of Trees. Uh, Iron Man 128, Demon in a Bottle. Uh, this one, I, I probably will send to CGC because it is a, a well-known book. Um, you know, classic Bob Layton cover. This is one of those Iron Man books that everybody kind of knows and, and always probably fetches an okay price. Here we have uh, Yusaki Ojimbo number one uh, from Fantagraphics Books. Um, I, I can't remember if this is really number one, number one, because Dan Sakai um, did publish Usagi under quite a few different um, companies. Um, 
you know, he was with Dark Horse for a long, long time. Right now he's with IDW. But uh, my local comic shop, when they got this in, um, they actually gave me a call because they knew that I was a big Usagi fan. I think I'm like one of the few people that have it pulled from my list and, uh, you know, I ran in and picked that up from them. Batman number 50 by Tom King. Uh, this is a Arthur Adams variant cover. Um, this was, uh, I can't remember if this is the one where he proposes to Catwoman, um, but it's in that uh, series, and I mean, look at the, the artwork on this, it's ridiculous. So, um, <laughs> you know, since it was uh, around the time that they were doing the proposal, I picked up a few different covers for that. This is Batman Kings of Fear by uh, the, the writer Peterson, I don't know, but the artwork is by Kelly Jones, and uh, Jones had a signing at my local comic shop about a year or two ago, so I um, had him sign this one because it was the most recent book he had out. I also had him sign this Swamp Thing um, by Len Wein uh, that he did. And I also had him sign an older issue of Batman, which I have. That's one that I have out at the at CBCS right now. Uh, this is Usagi number five from Fantagraphics. I figured I'll send this one out too. This is a great cover. Um, and again, my comic book shop, you know, I think one guy had sold his, his collection and they called me up when that one showed up. <laughs> This is All-Star Comics, number 58. This is the first appearance of Power Girl. Um, I actually didn't know that that was what it was initially. I, I picked it up. I don't remember where. And it's not in the best shape. I actually, for the longest time, I thought this was a, like a smudge or a stain. It's actually a shadow uh, of the guy who just beat up the JSA. But since it's the first appearance of Power Girl and uh, you know an older issue I thought I'd send that one out Hawkman number one by Jeff Johns um, and Rags Morales this I loved this run of uh, Hawkman um, Jeff Johns Hawkman basically just runs up and beats the crap out of people and it's uh, great stuff um, Hellboy, Seed of Destruction, number one, so basically the first Hellboy uh, series. Not the first appearance of Hellboy, but it is the first appearance of, um, like, Liz and uh, Abe Sapien. So, um, for a while there I was picking up everything Mignola, and I must have gotten this at a, like, at a premium somewhere. I don't even remember having purchased it, but, you know, that in. This is Seed of Destruction number two, which is a few more first appearances for some of the BPRD characters. So, I'll send this one out too. I don't know about you guys, but I love the, the Mignola verse is something that I, I keep track of, um, even with me trying to cut down. This is Ultimate Fallout number four, which is the first appearance of Miles Morales. Spider-Man. Um, I was picking up all the Ultimate Spider-Man for the longest time, and I, I knew I probably had this issue somewhere. And thankfully, when going through my collection recently um, and downsizing, you know, here it was. So I'll send that one out. It's not super expensive at this point, but you know, Miles Morales having his own movie and uh, Into the Spider-Verse winning it an Oscar. Hopefully that'll pop up soon. Uh, this is The Max, number one, the original image by Sam Keith. Um, I just love The Max. I've always loved his design, and Sam Keith's artwork is uh, just some of the best stuff. So, um, you know, again, this one doesn't quite, it doesn't really, um, it's not a, a huge price tag book, but Want to send that out. And then this one, 
probably my most expensive book that, that I know of for sure. Um, this is Hulk number 180. Uh, and to me, um, this is the first appearance of Wolverine. It is what they term a cameo appearance before the first appearance. Um, you know, some characters will be like, you know, they're in one or two panels. Or maybe they're in shadow before they're like the star of a comic. Um, and that's the deal here. So, this issue of the Hulk is fighting the Wendigo in the final, final panel of the issue is the first ever appearance of Wolverine. He basically walks out of the forest in his original outfit and, and challenges the Hulk. And then the next issue, which I unfortunately don't have, 180, or 181, um, that's the famous original Hulk versus Wolverine fight. So I inherited this from my uncle. Uh, he had a whole bunch of Hulk stuff. And uh, thankfully he had bought this issue. Um, but unfortunately, the uh, Hulk versus Wolverine... Either he didn't pick up or he got rid of. So, uh, so that's it for today, guys. Uh, gonna send those out um, when I get the books I sent out to CBCS back. Um, I'll try to do a filming on those and, and see you guys. Uh, show you guys what I have as far as graded books. Okay, you guys have a good one.